What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about the best things to do and see in the English city of York. Now, York is one of those English cities that I have heard the name of plenty of times, but when I actually stop and think about it, nothing comes to mind. I don't know what York looks like. I don't know what's going on in York. I don't know what kind of secrets York is holding, but today I am prepared to uncover all of these secrets. So just some information to start out here. York is a walled city, walled, Northeast England that was founded by the ancient Romans. See, even the descriptions of like English cities, British cities in general, are so much more interesting than like most American cities. We got walls, we got ancient Romans creating this, uh, a 13th century Gothic cathedral, medieval stained glass, two bell towers. The city walls form a walkway. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, pretty soon here, I'm gonna turn on a video and actually get to see this stuff, but this sounds amazing. Unlike Liverpool, York is a quiet city surrounded by country towns and villages. Oh uh, yeah, York uh, kind of seems like it might be not as famous as some other places like Liverpool might be. So maybe it's honestly has less of those annoying American tourists and is maybe a nicer place to live actually in England. Not as popular for first time travelers. Yes, very underrated by the sound of it. Kind of like all cities that are not named London. It sounds pretty underrated. It's a cathedral city in North Yorkshire, England. Okay, York boasts the most attractions per square mile. Of all the cities in the UK, the most attractions per square mile. That's an interesting metric, count me in. All right, so uh, I have a little video here. 15 things, best things to do and see in York. Uh, the description alone, Sounds pretty incredible. So I'm excited to see here what we have in store for the city of York. We're going to start this list with my personal favorite thing to do in York, and that is to walk the city walls. Yeah. York walls are the most complete example of medieval city walls that you will find still standing in England today. That, this is unbelievable. This, this kind of stuff truly just doesn't exist in the United States. Literal medieval walls. And uh, it's not like this city is an old, you know, relic of the past, although it is. What I'm trying to say is it's a modern city with modern people living in it, yet it does such a great job of maintaining all this old architecture, which people get to enjoy to this day, right? There's literally a medieval wall around the city are the most complete example of medieval city walls that you will find still standing in England today. Wow. The walk is over two and a half miles long, although this does include a few breaks. These breaks do mean that you can easily enter and exit the walls at different points, so you don't have to do the full walk if you don't want to. Okay, it doesn't go around the entire city. Just in my, <laughs> in my mind it does. But it's, it's very cool. Two miles, you can actually go up into the wall and there's like little uh, turrets or whatever you want to call them along the wall and that is awesome, man. As you walk the walls, you will get a great perspective over the city buildings and beautiful gardens, spot interesting wow. brass markers on the floor and pass by gatehouses known as yeah. bars, which are tall towers. Oh, oh, what are they known as? <laughs> spot interesting brass markers on the floor and pass by gatehouses known as bars, which are tall towers which acted to defend the city. Yeah, those things. Those are amazing. This is just... It kind of sets the tone, it feels like, for the city of York. Like, it, it had the overall feeling of, like, this old culture and all this old architecture. It'd be such a fun place to live or, or even just visit. Not only are these walls a great way to spend an hour or two getting a feel for the city, but walking the city walls is free. Ah. There are a couple of small museums along the wall on Henry VIII and Richard III that you can visit for a fee, but to just pop up and go for a stroll above the streets, there is no charge. That This is what I'm talking about. You can actually like walk along the ancient York walls on your way to work or something. And they managed to throw a couple of gift shops and museums in as well. I don't mind it. It's a little touristy. I don't mind it. <laughs> 
Not only does York have the best preserved medieval city walls in the country, but it also has arguably the best preserved medieval street in the country too. The sh Hold up, show that again. But it also has arguably the best preserved medieval street in the country too. That is awesome. Everything is so close together. I, I, I feel like this is probably oversaid, but this honestly looks like a scene out of like Harry Potter. Walls in the country, but it also has arguably the best preserved medieval- Like, like, I would not be surprised if there is a literal wand and cauldron shop located on this street. Evil street <laughs> in the country too. <laughs> the shambles is a narrow what? couple- What? Uh, that! Okay. I'm point proven. World of wizardry store. Wizardry store right there. I, okay, that's York's secret. It's actually actually a wizarding town, city. <laughs> wow, secrets out. <laughs> Street lined with old crooked leaning buildings. It is sometimes said that there is a point where the top floors lean so close together that supposedly you could actually shake hands through the window with the person across the streets from you. Exactly. This is so unique. I've never seen anything like this. The tops of the buildings are actually only a few feet apart. It makes for a wonderful like enchanting looking, uh, I don't know, roads. The whole city is c just kind of reinforces this old world feeling that uh, y you really don't ever get to see, especially in America. The streets used to be home to several butcher shops and you can still spot the meat hooks attached to the shop fronts. Okay. <laughs> the pavements were raised so that the sloped cobbled streets formed a channel for butchers to be able to dump the blood and waste from their shop to be washed away. Oh God, that's a little morbid, but uh, yeah, even the road, the streets, the cobblestone, and the the brick road is just like awesome in and of itself. I'd never, you, <laughs> and believe me, I don't often say that a, a road looks cool, but this is cool. Fortunately, the street is much more sanitary today and is now filled with shops and places to grab something to eat. Wizard shops, wizarding shops everywhere. I knew it. <laughs> York is a great place to indulge your sweet tooth. Oh! You can start right here on the shambles with a visit to York's longest established artisan chocolatiers. Artisan chocolate. Say no more. I can stop the video right here. York is known for artisan, artisanal chocolate shops and wizarding magic. Say no more. I'm sold. Monk Bar Chocolatiers create over 50 types of luxury handmade chocolates. Wow. We tried a melted chocolate shot which came in a dark chocolate glass, and yes, it was as good as it sounds. Oh, wow. If fudge is more your thing, then try visiting the Fudge Kitchen. Their creamy fudge is so nice and comes in lots of different flavors. And if you time your trip just right, you might even get to see them making some of the fudge right there in the store. Oh, I love that. Oh, I, I actually am very interested in this kind of stuff. You'll never find me actually doing the cooking and the the baking and the, but I love watching experts do stuff like making fancy chocolate like actually if you want to learn more about the history of chocolate making in York then you can take a guided tour over at York's chocolate story wow wow York's chocolate story so York really is known for like really really nice chocolate that Unexpected, but I'm not upset. <laughs> Something savory, there are plenty of options to grab a quick bite to eat, but we'll give you a few ideas to get you started. Okay. Shambles Kitchen is an ideal stop for anyone who likes slow cooked meat. Ah. Their popular pulled pork sandwiches are absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh, this is like an American's dream. Uh, they didn't say barbecue, but it is pulled pork and chocolate. This is, this is fantastic. Another excellent option for sandwiches is the York Roast Company, where you can grab yourself a roast dinner inspired oh. sandwich. <laughs> you can even get your meat, roast vegetables, stuffing and gravy served up inside a Yorkshire pudding wrap. Oh, York some more varied Yorkshire pudding. Uh, <laughs> the, the British puddings always make me a little nervous, but this meat looks absolutely delicious. I'm actually starting to salivate like uh, unintentionally. Adoptions head to Shambles Food Court over at Shambles Markets for some street food. Pizza, okay. crepes, hot dogs, Thai dishes, burritos, and more, you're bound to see something that you like the look of. Nice. And when you're finished, you can take a look around the market stalls. Oh, that's so cool. Street markets, man, I feel like I'd lose all my money in York and gain like 20 pounds, but I'd be happy. <laughs> Next on our list is a must-do for your trip, and that is to visit the iconic York Minster. Wow! 
This incredible building is one of the largest cathedrals in Northern Europe. It took around Sheesh. 250 years to build and really is a sight to behold. That is, that is a sight to behold. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad York has done such a fantastic job at preserving these, this type of historical architecture. You, and this is exactly the kind of thing you don't see in America. I feel I'm, like I'm saying that so often today in this video. But York has so much history to it uh, that it's, it's the kind of thing that I, I really have never experienced. If you like, you can admire the Minster from the outside, but if it's within your budget, we would- This thing is gigantic. Like, enormous. I imagine standing outside of it is a whole different experience as well. Uh, I think she's about to say, you do actually have to pay to go inside this, huh? In your budget, we would recommend paying the £11.50 admission fee oh. to go inside and yeah. see more of the medieval stained glass and intricate carved stonework. Yeah, that is amazing. They don't make it like this anymore. They don't make statues of pigs, as I see right there on the right-hand side. They don't make st statues of hogs like that anymore, I tell you. <laughs> your admission also includes an informative tour from an extremely knowledgeable guide who will talk you through the history, architecture, and stories behind the Minster. Wow. In addition to the main entrance fee, you can also purchase an add-on if you would like to climb the 275 steps to the top of the Minster Tower. Oh. Okay. Once you're back outside, if you pop into the adjacent Dean's Park, you can get some lovely views of the Minster from another angle. It's just so beautiful. Like, what can you even say? This is an amazing piece of architecture. While we're talking about paid attractions, I want to mention the York City Pass. Once you've decided what attractions you would like to visit, make sure you work out ahead of time whether or not you would save money by purchasing the York Pass rather than paying for attractions individually. Oh, the York Pass? Is that some kind of like touristy thing where you buy a bunch of attractions all at once? It may be touristy, but may maybe you save money. I don't know. If you buy the pass, it allows you free entry into many attractions in and around York, but depending on your plans, it won't necessarily work out cheaper. Okay. What is it? Oh, what, what, what were some of these? Bath Museum, Italian Restaurant, York Minster. Okay. Railway Museum. Cool. Viking Center. Okay. Dungeon, the York Dungeon. Okay. Plans, it won't necessarily work out cheaper. While in York, you can visit Clifford's Tower. Oh, wow. Sitting on a great mound in the city center, this 13th century stone tower is all that remains of the Norman castle. Whoa, there's a literal, like, remains of a castle in the city? Once inside, you can learn about the dark, tragic history of the tower. You can also walk around the top, which was once used as a vantage point for the castle guards. Wow, this, that is awesome. That is awesome. That is literally a castle. You can go on top of a castle and actually get a great view of the city. From here, there are some terrific panoramic views over the city, and on a clear day, you can see as far as the North York Moors. Wow. Admission is £6.50 for adults, £3.90 for children, or free for English Heritage members. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, uh, United States, you know, we don't have random castles around here, so this is like very extra special. Close to Clifford's Tower is York Castle Museum, which is housed inside old prison buildings. Okay. You can take photos in here, but filming isn't allowed, so please bear with the slideshow for this one. Okay. For £12 admission, you can explore various immersive exhibitions from the history of children's toys to World War One. Oh, it's like they actually recreated some things from uh, historical York. But the highlight of the museum is the recreation of a Victorian street, where you can- They actually recreated an entire Victorian street? Which is funny because York itself is almost like an authentic, like, uh, street straight out of the past with all the cobblestone and old buildings and castles. York itself is like stepping into a museum or time capsule, and then you can do a uh, medieval inception by go in York, stepping into a museum again to the past. Wow. You can explore narrow alleyways, complete with period shops and living spaces. Cool. Not only is York Castle Museum a fantastic attraction, but it is also said to be one of many haunted locations in York, which takes us to our next activity. Oh. Explore Haunted York. Haunted York? Wait, willingly? You have to wi you willingly step into Haunted York. Oh man. York claims to be the most haunted city in Europe, and with a- What? 
Wait, what? That wasn't in the Google description. Wait, York is the most haunted city in Europe? All of Europe. Wait a minute, how is this the first time I'm hearing this? Dark history and over 500 ghostly sightings recorded so far, it's not really a surprise that many people think York is worthy of this title. Oh, it's, I guess when you take like this old architecture and the like, uh, even the cathedral look, looking things and the old castles that are kind of run down, when you take all that and make it nighttime and dark, that does kind of look a bit scary. <laughs> There is so much to cover on the haunted side of York that uh, we could dedicate an uh, entire video to it. But for the sake of uh, this video, we'll just give you a couple of suggestions for ways to spook up your York trip. <laughs> okay. You may want to join in one of several ghost walks where you will be guided through the ancient streets and recounted ghoulish tales of the city's past. A ghost walk? Wait, what? Who is this? What's he doing? <laughs> Stop that ghost right there. <laughs> you can actually pay to go on a walk at night and hear ghost stories. That sounds extremely touristy, and yet kind of irresistible. <laughs> Alternatively, you can explore York's darkest history at York Dungeon, oh. where you're taken through several different interactive shows with enthusiastic live actors and special effects. Oh, that actually sounds awesome. Kind of sick that we, uh, especially us American tourists, uh, are attracted to this stuff. You know, recreations, reenactments of torture and death but uh, at least you're making money off of it. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it's one of those things where it's so horrible. The actual history of this dungeon and torture is horrific, and yet we, we can't take our eyes away from it, can we? It's really good fun. If all the spookiness is making you thirsty, then you could stop by one of several of York's haunted pubs, which takes us to the next point on our- Haunted pub, okay. <laughs> haunted pub. List. Visit one of York's unique drinking halls. You'll be spoiled for choice as York has more than 365 pubs, meaning that you could visit a different- <laughs> Three over 365 pubs. You can go to one, a different pub every day. Man, pubs must be so popular. Again, like pubs are not a thing in America. Hard for me to relate. There can really be 365 pubs that all do well enough to survive just from a business standpoint can there ever be too much pubs i guess not different pub every day of the year without visiting the same one twice yeah we have tried many of the pubs and bars in york over the years so to try and help you narrow it down here's a few of our favorites okay we'll start off with one of those haunted pubs that we mentioned okay the golden fleece which was formerly a high-class medieval inn and coach house is one of the oldest and most haunted pubs in york Oh. Said to be home to several resident ghosts, you could see Lady Alice Peckett roaming the corridors, or one-eyed Jack in the bottom bar wearing his red coat. What? And even if you don't see any strange happenings on your visit, it's still a lovely old pub to stop in for a pint. It does sound, it does sound cool, and the whole haunted pub gimmick would actually work on me as well. <laughs> for a spooky free visit, well, probably, you never know when in York, then you might want to try Pivney. This pub is set in a cozy 16th century half-timbered townhouse wow. and has a good selection of real ales and craft beers. Wow. Another great option for beer lovers is the House of Trembling Madness. Make your way up the narrow staircase to the tiny upstairs medieval tavern. Here you'll oh my gosh, it's so funny because in America, every now and then you'll see like a, something called an, an Irish pub and it's like the most it, not authentic pub, like <laughs> attempt at a pub in America. And these are just like so incredibly old and authentic. It'd be really fun to actually experience these pubs. You'll find high ceilings, old wooden beams, a wall filled with mounted taxidermy, yeah. and a warm, cozy atmosphere. <laughs> we enjoyed the beers they have on offer, and the food, while being limited in choice, has in our experience always been pretty tasty. Oh. If it's cocktails you're after, then stumble just a couple of doors down the street to Evil Eye. Evil this Eye. This colourful bar and gin shop has a huge menu of classic and signature cocktails, and having tried many concoctions from here over the years, I can honestly say that every drink I have had has been absolutely delicious, and often pretty strong as well. <laughs> I love the names of these places as well. The Evil Eye. Next on our list is to take a walk around York Museum Gardens. These botanical gardens are a peaceful Ooh. oasis in the center of York, and we find they make a really nice break from the crowded streets. This is, and this is also a nice little change up from the 
the death and dungeons and and haunted pubs to this like kind of peaceful garden atmosphere very nice as well as being well maintained free to enter and beautiful all year round the gardens are also home to the ruins of saint mary's abbey oh wow oh and there's more ruins more old architecture and gardens and it's all free and open to the public that's very nice the Abbey was first built in 1088 by William the Conqueror and oh, was once wow. the richest Abbey in Northern England. Oh, wow. However, as Henry VIII dissolved monasteries throughout the country, St. Mary's Abbey, like so many others, fell into disrepair. It's, it's, in, it's interesting because uh, it's cool to see the architecture that has survived a lot to the modern day, but it's also very fun and interesting to see this kind of old architecture that's really like 90 percent run down and broken and it's really just the remnants of something that was amazing it's also in a way really interesting to look at these incredible ruins are now a highlight of the gardens and you should try to factor some time into your trip to take a stroll here especially if the weather is on your side yeah york previously renamed jorvik was first invaded by the vikings in the year 866 wait what jorvik invaded by the vikings wait what they settled in and ruled over the city for around a century. Really? If you're interested in learning more about Viking history, archaeology, and what Viking life would have been like, then you can visit Jorvik Viking Center. I had no idea York had a, such an important Viking history. That's like a whole different aspect about York I didn't even know. And there's a Viking center. Yes, I'd absolutely want to see this. I haven't been since I was a child, but to this day, I can still remember the dark ride which takes you through the sights, sounds, and smells of a replica Viking village. So what? while we can't say how good it is- You can see a replica Viking village. There is some awesome stuff in York. And more than one, like, uh, recreations of old things. Uh, pretty awesome. Like, I feel like there's so many things, so much to see in York, it'd be tough to see it all. Almost as tough as visiting all 365 pubs. It is for an adults only trip, I can vouch for it being a memorable experience for kids. Wow, I, I love this, the road, the city streets of York are just so fun. How good it is for an adults only trip, I this. can vouch for it being a memorable experience for kids. Wow. Near York train station is the National Railway Museum, which is the largest museum of its kind in the country. Oh, Even wow. as someone who isn't oh. particularly interested in trains, I still thought this was a fantastic attraction in York and well worth visiting. Yeah. The museum has a huge collection of locomotives of various types from different periods in history. Wow. I particularly enjoyed being able to peer inside the royal carriages, walk through the 1970s Shinkansen, otherwise oh. known as the bullet train. And oh, that's cool how you can go inside of it. Yeah. I feel like most people aren't, like, super enthusiastic about trains and, and stuff, but the fact that you can go and see these in person and interact with them a bit is very cool. Being able to actually walk underneath one of the locomotives. Oh, yeah! The museum is free to enter with a suggested donation and is open from 10 a.m. until 5 or 6 p.m., depending on the time of year. Nice! We both really enjoyed this museum and would recommend popping in if you can. Nice! Take a stroll down the paved banks of the picturesque River Ouse and watch yes. the birds and the boaters go by. If you like, that is so cool. How there's a river, the River Ouse, and it looks like there's a uh, ferry rides and stuff. Maybe you can get a to little tour. If you like, you can join the short cruise on an open deck sightseeing boat, or if you would rather do the driving yourself, you can hire a small boat for up to one hour. Oh, you can get a boat. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. You can get your own boat. Oh, now we're talking. If you like a good street name, then you'll love spotting some of the names of the streets in York. The most huh. famous and most peculiar is Whitmawatmagate. <laughs> okay, Whitmawatmagate, all right. This is the shortest street in York, and in 1505 was known as Whitnawatmagate, which translated to Water Street. Okay. The more eagle-eyed among you may notice when walking around York that there are small cat statues dotted around various buildings. Oh. It is thought that originally cat statues were placed on buildings to ward away evil spirits oh. and to frighten away rats, which carried the plague and other illnesses. That is, it's like a game. It's like spot the cat statues. I didn't notice that at all. A fun and free activity is to pick up a map from York Glass located on the shambles <laughs> yes. or download the map to your phone and follow the trail trying to spot the different cats hidden around the city. <laughs> it literally is a game, a challenge. 
to spot all the York cat statues. That's great. If you do have time for a day trip from York, then we would recommend York Air Museum. Today, it is one of the largest independent aviation museums in the country wow. and houses historic aircrafts, vehicles, and fascinating exhibits within restored original World War II buildings. Nice. We have other videos on places to visit in the UK which you might like to watch next. All right, and there you have it. York. Amazing. A lot to see, man, and so beautiful. Uh, this video was by Our Travel Place, and I liked it. I gotta give that a like. That was so enjoyable. There is, uh... I went from knowing sort of nothing about York, not having any picture in my mind of what was going on in York, to almost having too much to think about in regards to York. There is so much cool stuff. There's stuff that's perfect for visitors and tourists, and there's it seems like a great place to just live as well. Not the most well-known tourist destination, at least for Americans, for sure. So it's probably not as annoyingly populated by tourism, but still plenty of stuff to do. Plenty of pubs to visit, dungeons to visit, tours and ferries and the river, and it's fantastic. It, that was so delightful to, to learn about. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain, stuff in Britain, British culture, British cities, uh, stuff about Britain I've never learned before. Feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.